Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day, and if you're not, I've got a little something for you to make it better. You probably watched one of my previous videos where I tested all Windows and BIOS optimizations so we can finally figure out what actually gives an FPS boost and what's just recycled content from the Stone Age that doesn't work on newer systems. However, that video was Intel specific, so a lot of people using AMD felt left out and asked me to make part 2, so of course, I went and grabbed a Ryzen chip so I can show some love to my people from Team Red. Now I know some of you might think, yeah sure, 1000 FPS, this must be clickbait. I assure you it's not. I was a little skeptical too, especially looking at user benchmark telling people the Ryzen chip I just got is 1% worse than my 14th gen Intel. The 13600K and 14600K still deliver almost unparalleled real world gaming performance for around $200. You just shut the fuck up. Let me die in peace. In the last video, we tested the 17 most common optimizations, and after your suggestions for this video, we've got more than 20, so let's get to the details. We'll be using CapFrameX to capture the FPS and frame times, latency mon for the driver latencies and NVIDIA frame view so we can see the total PC latency before and after. For the sake of replicating the first video, we'll use aggregated benchmark results from Fortnite, Valorant, and Counter-Strike 2. Each setting was tested three times to avoid run variants, and here's my new system specs. Okay, I'm done with the yapping. Let's see the disclaimer. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. I just want to start by saying that the new Ryzen 9 chip got us between 25 and 50% FPS boost over my old 14th gen Intel. Both were benchmarked on a fresh Windows install with default BIOS settings. It was actually so bad that even a fully optimized and 6 GHz overclocked Intel couldn't match the default Ryzen chip as it still had the lead with up to 13.5% more FPS at stock. Hope that helps some of you guys that are looking to upgrade your system but are not sure what to get. Now let's start with Virtualization, or SVM, which also controls memory isolation within Windows. It gave us 9.6% FPS boost on average, 2.7% on the 1% lows, and minus 3% on the 0.2% lows. I didn't really notice any stuttering or major drops in the game, and I believe the 0.2% reading is incorrect, so feel free to disregard it for now. Next, we've got spread spectrum and base clock frequency. It gave us no average FPS boost, but improved our 1% and 0.2% lows by up to 11.7%. Next up is good old game mode. It gave us a 1% FPS boost on average, 1.7% on the 1% lows, and 1.5% on the 0.2% lows. Disabling C states gave us no significant FPS boost, and I personally keep it on to save some power on idle. Broke boy problems. Disabling hags didn't really affect our average FPS, but did improve the 1% and 0.2% lows by up to 2.8%. Disabling Windows Game Bar on this system actually decreased our FPS by up to 3.6%. I know it shouldn't be disabled for Ryzen chips with two CCDs, but mine only has one, so it didn't make much sense to me. Setting a value of 36 decimal for Win32 priority separation gave us up to 7.7% FPS boost on the 1% lows. You can also try setting a value of 40, which has the least input lag in my opinion. The results of debloating windows were kind of questionable, so I'll just call it run variance. But hey, at least we no longer have telemetry and Candy Crush on our PC. Using the PBO settings shown on the screen to overclock and undervolt our Ryzen chip gave us up to 9.4% FPS boost. On top of that, the CPU temperature dropped by about 10 degrees Celsius. Now that's a win-win. Disabling the first processor core in Process Lasso gave us no FPS boost on average, but we saw a significant improvement by up to 8% in the 1% and 0.2% lows. I'll make a video explaining how to fully configure Process Lasso very soon. Please make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss it. 
running the game in high versus normal priority didn't make a big difference and it's within the margin of error. However, if you're running other apps in the background with higher than normal priority, this might help make your game smoother. Dynamic Thread Priority Boost didn't give us any significant FPS boost, but it did help with some micro stuttering issues I had in the past. Performance Mode in Process Lasso, which essentially just sets their Bitsum highest performance power plan, didn't do much and it falls within the margin of error. However, it does help with reducing driver latency, just like using high performance and unparking your cores. I have a video on this if you'd like to check it out. We already had memory isolation turned off beforehand, so turning off Windows Defender itself didn't make a noticeable difference. I also recommend keeping it running on your computer as it won't change much performance-wise and will leave you vulnerable to many exploits if you remove it. I also tested timer resolution, again, to see if the results are any different when using a Ryzen chip. And well, it wasn't. What a surprise. I also retested high performance versus balanced power plans, just because I heard balance works best for Ryzen processors. Short answer, with the newest BIOS and in the games tested, this doesn't seem to be the case. But now, let's test full screen optimizations. Disabling them gave us no increase in average FPS, but got a tiny boost on the 1% and 0.2% lows. The games also felt smoother overall. Surprisingly, on the Ryzen chip, we've got better results with the balanced NVIDIA control panel settings. Unlike the previous video where we tested the same on an Intel chip and got up to 2.2% FPS boost with the highest performance settings. Now, I'm not sure if this has anything to do with Intel and NVIDIA simply working better together or anything of this sort, but I'll retest every single option in the control panel in another video so we can figure out what really gives a performance boost. Anyway, turning off all Windows visual effects like transparency and animations gave us a 1.7% FPS boost on the 1% lows which is well within the margin of error and I would personally ignore that. Once again, we saw no major difference when using MSI or line-based interrupts mode. Additionally, most modern GPUs will come with MSI mode enabled by default. I recommend you keep it that way as it will generally work better in most games. I also tried turning XMP and AMD Expo on, and both of them gave us exactly the same results with up to 8.8% FPS boost on the 0.2% lows. Make sure it's on in your BIOS so you can get the full performance from your RAM. Enabling game mode or turbo mode in the BIOS will only leave you with the physical cores running. It will also overclock your CPU by about 200 megahertz. I recommend you use the PBO settings we mentioned instead of the game mode setting. Turning on high efficiency mode, which in turn overclocks the RAM timings on top of using Expo, didn't give us a noticeable FPS boost. Some people report slightly better memory latency of about 10 nanoseconds, which you already know makes absolutely no difference in gaming. Enabling and forcing resizable bar for the games tested didn't do much FPS wise. However, it will help more in some demanding titles, so just keep it on for now. Oh look, it's that time. The time for the before and after results. And while we didn't reach a thousand frames per second, we were really close with an FPS boost of up to 48% when using the recommended settings from the video. We also saw a huge input lag decrease of 33%, which might be even more significant on low-end PCs. And here's my driver latencies after applying the recommended settings from the video. Now that we're done with all of this, I'll hold on to my promises and announce the Discord link for our server. It's now officially open for everyone, and I'd love to have you there. And if you want me to optimize your PC, including these tweaks and many more, please visit my website at framesynclabs.com. But hey, enough self-promoting for today. Please like this video so it reaches more people. Leave a comment if you have any questions or video requests, and I'll do my best to get them out to you. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.